Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is actually a very special video for me. It is the start of a new year. Today when I'm filming this, it's the 5th of January, 2018. The 1st of January this year marked my five year anniversary of a plant-based, otherwise known as vegan diet. And I strongly emphasize the word diet because I cannot say that I've had a completely vegan lifestyle for the, for the past five years, but I have been eating completely plant-based, other than one exception, which I will tell you about. Five years ago, I basically made the decision to go to a completely plant-based vegan diet as a New Year's resolution. And I thought, I'll try this out for a month, I'll see how it goes. If I decide that you know I'm miserable and I wanna go back to eating cheese or fish or whatever it is, then I'm just gonna let myself do it. But it turns out that that never happened. Days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months. And anyway, here we are five years later and I still eat a completely plant-based vegan diet and I don't have any plans to change that. I feel happier and healthier with my body than I really have in my entire life. I wanna kind of start out with giving you a little bit of a history on how I ended up being vegan, what my eating history is, and then towards the end of this video, I'm gonna answer some questions that are frequently asked to me about being vegan. But basically, this story starts when I was about 13 years old, I decided to go vegetarian. I moved out when I was 14. I went to boarding school in Scotland and that's where I actually ended up eating meat again because I was in boarding school. Basically my breakfast, lunch and dinner were in a cafeteria. I didn't have a whole lot of control over what was being made. When I became vegetarian at 13, I wasn't doing it correctly. I wasn't eating a lot of nutritious vegetables and food. I was basically just cutting out meat and eating things like mac and cheese, for example, or baked potatoes with butter and cheese or french fries. I wasn't really eating a lot of vegetables and I wasn't being healthy. So I ended up going back to eating meat and cheese and just a regular diet all the way through high school. I think it was my sophomore year of college. Maybe it was my freshman year, but I think it was my sophomore year. I decided to cut out red meat. So I decided I was only gonna be eating chicken and fish, but I was still eating dairy. I did that, I believe, all the way through my senior year in college. And by the way, I'm not going too much into detail about pescatarian or vegetarian, because I think they're pretty easy. You can go to most restaurants and eat, pescatarian very easily. Same with vegetarian nowadays. Vegan is much more of a commitment. I think it was my senior year of college, I went pescatarian. That was the year that um, I was having a lot of health issues. For example, I was having a lot of respiratory infections. I, at the end of the day, I actually had a much more serious issue. I'm not gonna get into that. I just wanted to mention the health issues because that was why I started researching nutrition. I was taking a lot of antibiotics, which is not good for your body, and I was constantly getting sick. And so I started looking at, well, what am I putting in my body? And is there any way I can change that or be doing something better? Something that came up in my research was cutting out dairy. Even though I was pescatarian, I was still eating dairy at the time. But after doing some research, first of all, I started becoming much healthier in terms of eating a lot more greens and vegetables and just eating a lot more clean. And then I started cutting out dairy. So I was pescatarian, but I was buying like almond milk and I was trying not to eat as much cheese and yogurt and things like that. That was kind of what got me into researching different diets and looking into cutting out dairy, which kind of led me to looking into veganism. There's basically two books and I read them both in 2012. The first book that I read, I read over the summer and it's called The Skinny Bitch. I'll put a picture of it right here. I read that book and it also has a meal plan at the back of the book as well as kind of a list of items you can get at the grocery store. It's not super healthy vegan. They still encourage a lot of processed items. It was just kind of my first introduction to veganism and I did follow the meal plan in the back of the book for a little bit. But I still didn't want to commit to saying, oh, I'm going to be vegan or plant-based forever because I just didn't think it was sustainable at that time. So fast forward six months, it's December of 2012 and I was traveling. So I brought a book with me and the book that I brought was The Kind Diet by Alicia Silverstone. And again, I'll put a picture of that book here. This is the book that I would recommend if you want to move to a plant-based diet. I would not recommend reading Skinny Bitch. Kind Diet was really what resonated with me. And that book also has, she actually has a lot of recipes. So a lot of her food is, um, it's all whole plant-based. So it's 
a lot of recipes from scratch, less processed stuff. I just liked her book and her approach so much better and she talked a lot more about kind of the reasons why it's better for your health and better for the environment. Also, December of 2012 was the month that I was graduating from college, so I was gonna be moving from my small college town, San Marcos, Texas, to Houston, which is a much larger city. San Marcos, for example, does not even have like a Whole Foods, which you really don't need a Whole Foods in your city to be vegan. It was just kind of a perfect storm. I was moving to a big city. It was the start of a new year and I was graduating from college and gonna go like start a real job. So I decided this is a good time to make my New Year's resolution or to make my thing this year is I'm gonna go vegan. So I started that in January of 2013 and I've been on a plant-based diet ever since. Oh, I didn't tell you what my one exception is. I told you at the beginning of the video, there's one exception. I eat completely plant-based or vegan except for one thing. And the one thing that I do eat is honey. Honey is not technically considered to be vegan because it is made from bees. And I like honey. I have really bad allergies and I do believe that eating like local honey is supposed to help with your allergies. Um, my boyfriend recently told me a cute term for it, which is vegan, so B-E-E-G-A-N, so like a B, so meaning I'm not totally vegan because I do eat honey, so I'm vegan. It's really the only exception. Have I slipped up in the past five years? Not purposely. The only things I've slipped up on are, for example, I was eating a cracker. I just kind of grabbed one and started eating it, and then I looked at the back of the box and noticed that the crackers had milk powder in them, which if you are vegan or you know that's like the most annoying thing. Like why, why is there milk powder and everything? It's so annoying. The only other thing I could maybe think of is there have been scenarios where I've been sitting at a restaurant with friends or colleagues and they've had like bread out on the table and I've just gone ahead and eaten the bread on the table without asking the server necessarily if it is vegan. I just kind of, if I'm hungry, I'm gonna go for it. I'm never, obviously I'm not gonna put butter on it. Obviously if the bread has cheese on it, I'm not gonna be eating that. But if it's just like plain bread and it doesn't look like it's covered in butter, then I'll probably eat it. Those are the ways in which I cheat. The thing that I wanted to touch on is the lifestyle. So I'm definitely not a perfect vegan by any stretch of the imagination, but there are certain things that I'm not willing to do. For example, my car has leather seats in it. I'm not willing to sell my car. But 2018 for me is gonna be the year that I'm a lot more conscious about the choices I'm making when I'm purchasing things. Last year, I started transitioning my makeup and beauty collection to all cruelty-free brands. In terms in terms of my stance on parent companies, I will still buy a brand if the parent company is not cruelty free. That's because I do think it gives them the data if they're seeing one of their brands is selling much more than the other and that brand is cruelty free, maybe it will make them think about making the rest of their stuff cruelty free. But I do own a lot of leather goods in terms of shoes and handbags and I don't intend on getting rid of them. I just intend on making more conscious decisions moving forward. And that doesn't mean I'm never gonna buy leather ever again again. It just means that I'm going to think about it. So I have just a couple of frequently asked questions that I'm going to go through. My phone is going to die soon where my notes are and my camera is probably not going to be able to hold much more footage. So I'll go through these quickly. The first most frequently asked question I get is why are you vegan? Number one, my health. It's better for my health. Number two, it's better for the environment. And number three, I don't want to support animal cruelty. Those are my top three reasons without getting too deep into them. Obviously I can dive a little bit deeper on those if you guys want me to let me know. Number two, is it hard? Look, it's gonna be hard a little bit in the beginning if you have been eating uh, meat and milk and eggs in every single one of your meals for the past 20 years or whatever. It's gonna be a little difficult at first. You may find it easier to make a slow transition like I did. You know, it can be a little challenging in the beginning you need to do a lot of research in terms of what you should be eating. It is a little bit of work in the beginning, but once you kind of get into the groove and you've got some recipes down and you kind of know what you like to order when you go out to eat, things get so much easier. In fact, now it's very easy for me. It's I wouldn't say it's hard at all, but that's because I've been doing it for five years. My personal opinion, the hardest part about it is getting so many personal questions about it. I just find it a little bit intrusive that people are asking me about my diet 
diet when I'm not asking them about theirs. Yes, I am choosing to put this information on them out on the internet, but it's the kind of thing that you're gonna get asked about it every single time you say it. You're never gonna be able to get away with being like, yeah, by the way, I'm vegan, and people are gonna be like, oh, cool. There's always gonna be a question, and it's a little annoying. The other most asked question that I get, where do you get your protein? Beans, nuts, lentils, quinoa, tempeh, tofu, soy milk. I know like tempeh and tofu, you're thinking gross. It's really not. Don't knock it till you've tried it. Is it expensive? No, it's not expensive. Most of the time, d meat dishes at restaurants are more expensive than veg vegetarian dishes. With any diet, you can choose to be you know, on a budget or you can choose to be extravagant with it. If you're buying all these extravagant vegan products that are ex exclusive to Whole Foods, you're probably gonna spend some money. But if you're shopping in the produce section, if you're buying rice and beans and potatoes and fruit and vegetables, it's really not that expensive. The last couple things I wanted to touch on before I wrap up this video, I wanted to mention a few documentaries that I think actually when I watched all of these, I already was vegan because I think these have all come out kind of in the last five years. Howspiracy is a great one. If you haven't seen it, these are all on Netflix, by the way. Vegucated is a really good one. It follows different people who are not vegan on their journey eating vegan. What the Health is one that came out, I think, last year. It's a little bit extreme, but if you want just kind of some motivation or a push as to why to go vegan, that's certainly a good one to watch. Also, I suggest following some vegan YouTubers. One of my personal favorite vegan YouTubers is Rianne. Her channel is Rianne HY or Wife Life. She makes a lot of great recommendations for beauty products as well as clothing and other lifestyle items that are vegan. I would also recommend if you're wanting to go look at other resources, I would follow some Instagram or Facebook accounts that are people who live locally where you are that are also vegan. For example, there's an account called Vegan Houston on Instagram and I've been following him, I'm pretty sure for the whole time I've been vegan for the last five years. He always is eating the most delicious looking food. But yeah, I would suggest following some accounts like that so you can see where you can go and eat in your city or town to get good vegan food. Anyway, I'm pretty sure I am going to wrap this video up here. Give this video a thumbs up if you are still here watching with me and thank you so much for watching this all the way through. I really hope it was in some way helpful or informative for you. Let me know in the comments down below, are you vegan? Do you plan on going vegan? The best New Year's resolution that I've ever made was definitely the one I made five years ago to be vegan. I'm honestly proud to be able to sit here and make this video and say that it's been five years. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe. I plan on making a lot more content about what I eat and my diet and lifestyle. So subscribe to my channel if you wanna check those out in the future. And then I'll also leave my Instagram and Twitter and Snapchat handles here. Those are all the places where you can continue to follow me, but hopefully I will see you in my next video. Bye.